Okay, so um, the most basic type of quadratic equation, which is what we're going to be studying in chapter 12, are perfect square equations. Um, and perfect square equations are pretty simple to solve. And so the first type of perfect square equation is one that looks like um, this, where you have x squared equals 16. And you're asked to solve this equation. And when you have an equation like x squared equals 16, you're looking for all the values for x that make this equation true. And so we solve it by taking the square root of both sides. And so our first tool for solving quadratic equations is take the square root of both sides, if we can. Whenever we do that, we inserted the perfect square. Um, and so you have to do x equals plus or minus 4. And so the answer to this question is x equals plus or minus 4. Um, it's plus or minus 4 because whenever you enter the square root yourself, you have to do, consider the positive and the negative value of the perfect square. Now, um, you can also have problems that look like this, x minus 2 um, squared equals 16. And this is treated the exact same way, except that you need to be a little bit more careful at the end because when you take the square root of both sides, you don't get x equals um, plus or minus 4. You get x minus 2 equals plus or minus 4. And this can be evaluated, and it's actually two separate equations because of the plus or minus. And so it's x minus 2 equals 4 and x minus 2 equals negative 4. And so that gives you x equals 6 when you add 2 to both sides, and x equals negative 2. So you still e e end up with two answers, just like this one, but they're not the same, uh, they're not opposites of each other, like 4 and negative 4. They're 6 and negative 2 um, away from each other. Now, when you're looking at this um, and taking the square root of both sides here, the um, uh, there's a couple things to notice. First off, this... It does have an x value. If you multiplied x squared, x minus 2 out, you'd get x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 16, which is x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. And we have learned to solve problems like that, and we'll do more like this, where you can go through and factor it. And that would have been another way to get your 6 and negative 2 as your answers. But if you ever can make it a perfect square, it is a very simple way to do it by completing the square. And so these are kind of your two different types of problems that you'll have, um, just in some different forms. So let's just do a couple examples. Um, 3x squared minus 5 equals 20, um, uh, 26. And so, uh, not 26, sorry, 28. And so that's going to give you 3x squared equals 33. Whenever you're using to take the square root of both sides, the thing you're taking the square root of to get the variable out has to be by itself. It can't have a coefficient. It can't have anything added to the square. And so we need to keep going and get it to where you get x squared equals 11. Now I can take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root of both sides, I get plus or minus square root of 11. Those are your two answers. Positive square root of 11, negative square root of 11. You can also have something like that when you have 2 times x plus 3 squared minus 5 equals um, um, 15. So to do this, you do have a x value that is a in a perfect square, this x plus 3 squared. You have no other x's, so that's nice. And so you could actually use the square root of both sides. So you do that by isolating this x plus 3 squared term. So you add 5 here and add 5 here, so you get 2 times x plus 3 squared equals 20. Divide through by 2, and that gives you x plus 3 um, squared equals 10. Take the square root of both sides, and I get x plus 3 equals plus or minus square root of 10. Now, that's not my answer. My answer is just going to turn out to be subtract 3. So negative 3 plus or minus square root of 10, which is basically the same as negative 3 plus square root of 10 negative 3 minus the square root of 10, and that is the answer to this problem. You can have some fractions involved, and so you could have a problem that looks like this, where you do um, something like Uh, y plus 2 thirds squared um, equals, um, and maybe you'll have something like um, 16 over 9. So now when you do the square root of both sides, 
you get y plus two thirds, that's what this equals, equals plus or minus four thirds. Notice we, don't, we only apply the plus or minus to the side without the variable. We don't need to do it to both sides. So now we need to solve this, so you get y equals um, subtract two thirds from both sides, and so you have two different equations, right? Four thirds minus two thirds, which equals two thirds. And then you also have um, negative four thirds minus two thirds, which equals negative six thirds, which equals negative two. And so my answers were two thirds and negative two. I had two different answers. They should not be in parentheses. That's an ordered pair. They should be in uh, brackets like that. And then the last thing to remember is if you run into a situation where you're trying to um, uh, take the square root of both sides and when you solve for the perfect square and you get x squared equals negative 3 and you take the square root of both sides, we haven't learned about imaginary numbers. We're just solving these over real numbers. Um, and so you can't take the square root of a negative and get a real solution. And so the answer to this is no real solution. And so you can get no solution, and that is when your x, the, the term that is being squared, is equal to a negative number.